Welcome to this training program. I'm Tina Ramirez, the founder and president of Hardwired Global, and we train leaders all around the world to defend the fundamental human right to freedom of thought, conscience, religion, or belief. Now that we've created a conceptual change about religious freedom, we can begin to apply what we've learned to lessons that you will develop to teach these same concepts to others. Now, for the first step, you have to identify who your audience is. What age will you be teaching? What subject? Where will your lesson fit into your curriculum? What are the issues that your students are facing in their lives, both inside and outside of the classroom, that affect their perception of others? This is like the tree of intolerance that we identified at the beginning. And what misconceptions do you know that they already have about others that you want to address? Next, you need to identify your goal. What are the key misconceptions your students have about religious freedom? Some of the things that we often hear are that religions have rights and must be protected from criticism. Another misconception is that religious freedom is a right determined by the governments, or that religion is a private matter and requires no public protection. Often we hear that religion imposes morality on others and threatens a secular or democratic society. And still at times we hear that individuals are born into their religion and cannot change their religious identity or their beliefs. Another misconception is that individuals do not have a right to hold different beliefs within their religious community. And there is no right to teach others about your religion or convince them of the truth of your religious beliefs. Some misconceptions occur when people believe that every religion must be true or that governments can control or restrict what people say or believe. Another misconception is that the majority religion has the right to enforce their religious rules on everyone or that there is no right to criticize religion. There are no limits on how people may practice their religion. It is okay to be violent toward others if it is based on religious beliefs. Individuals must give up their citizenship if they leave their religion. Religious expression is no different than other forms of expression, like politics, and should not receive special protection. Religious freedom is a Western concept and doesn't apply to my culture. Religion can be practiced anywhere, so there's no right to a geographic site or holy place to travel to to fulfill your religious obligations. What are the key concepts that we need to understand to address those misconceptions? There are a few specific ones. First, human dignity. Human dignity is the most fundamental concept that we need to understand. Second, non-discrimination. Non-discrimination is similar because everyone requires equal protection under the law based on their human dignity. Third, conscience. The spiritual dimension of human life has provided special protection because it's where ideas, beliefs, and convictions about religious truth, morality, and life after death are explored. It's where they shape how we live. Individuals within a religious community define the scope of their beliefs. Next, changeability. Every person is born with a conscience, free to explore eternal truths and change their beliefs as they grow. So religion or belief is changeable. It's not an immutable characteristic like race or gender. And individuals can choose not to have a religion or belief as well. This is an individual human right. You see, individuals hold the right to freedom of religion or belief, but this right also protects the individual's right to practice their beliefs within a religious community and even to dissent from the community. It also protects the right of parents to teach their children about their religion or belief. Next, it's a public or private religion. Religious beliefs are formed within the human conscience and they influence how individuals act or express themselves publicly in accordance with their conscience and their sense of religious obligations. Expression. Individuals have a right to practice their religion in various ways, including those most common among all religions, in order to fulfill their religious obligations of worship by acting in accordance with their conscience and beliefs. This includes the right to share your beliefs with others. Finally, limitations. There are no limits on what people may believe, but there are limits on how they express their beliefs. Religious expressions that violate the rights of others are not protected, and there are times the government may need to limit expression to protect public safety, order, health, or morality. Now, step three, we need to create a framework for your lessons. This begins with analogies. In the activity that we presented of the fruit, we used an analogy. Analogies make complex ideas simple. They appeal to something we already know, our prior frame of reference, and they connect it with a complex or sensitive subject. 
They offer an indirect or safe environment when talking about religion in particular. Moreover, for youth that have experienced trauma or have been exposed to intolerant ideas, analogies will help them deconstruct their experiences and have the courage to form new ideas. So by identifying an analogy that fits your curriculum, you can help students take greater steps in the conceptual change process. Next, you need to pose a challenge. What kind of challenges are your students facing that you can weave into the lesson? For instance, one group that we met shared a lesson about a tree being cut down and how the students had to respond. Another group mentioned how other fruit were grafting themselves onto their tree. These are challenges that help students understand and address complex issues. In the fruit example, students learned what it was like to be a minority, to be displaced from their home, or to become a refugee. The challenges that you pose in your lesson will help the students experience cognitive dissonance, or a tension between what they believe and the new information. This tension is critical for the mental friction that creates ideological movement or changes in belief to occur. Now, how will you engage your students? As you notice throughout our lessons, we found interesting ways of engaging you with a question. This is a simple tool to establish a comfort level that is conducive to greater learning. So how will you engage your students each lesson? Now, let's identify some activities. You will need to build an activity for each concept you want to convey to your students. Activities are the building blocks for conceptual change. And as you build each activity, you will need to check for understanding and make sure if you need to do any revisions to keep your students headed towards their goal. The final test of conceptual change is whether the student can apply what they've learned to new situations. This is where you can observe how well they've internalized a new way of thinking about others. Now, we need to check for understanding. Throughout the lessons, we were constantly checking for understanding and making adjustments as necessary. You see, trainers are observers. This can be done by walking around the room and listening to what your students are saying, asking students to write their ideas before sharing them, using different methods of sharing ideas, from placing stickers on concepts that they understood, having the class actively participating in evaluating the ideas being shared. Another important way trainers can build greater understanding is by incorporating basic methodologies of learning styles. The more senses that are engaged in a lesson, the greater the impact. Touch, taste, sight, smell, and noise. Bloom's taxonomy and other materials exist to describe these different ways of engaging students to increase the learning experience. And we used many of them throughout the lessons that we did with you. Throughout the lessons, we had teachers write their definition of religious freedom on a note card. At the end, they reviewed their responses and were able to see how much more they could say based on the new learning they had experienced. We also used a survey to help show how views changed by the end of the lesson. Evaluating understanding and conceptual change is important, but it is a continuous process throughout the learning experience and not something that happens only in a test at the end of the lesson.